Hello, ladies and gentlemen. All right, today we are going to have a little bit of a video lesson covering solving linear equations. Now, please make sure that you complete these notes and any example problems in your interactive notebook, all right? Whatever you don't get through in class will need to be homework, all right, or practice, additional practice. So first off, let's just talk about what it means when we say this word solve. Okay, so first off, talking about solving really comes from the idea of trying to find a solution, okay? And a solution is a value for a variable that makes the equation true. So when we say solve, we are looking for a number that's equal to our variable, all right? Uh, I'm going to abbreviate the word variable to VAR. Um, so, you know, a solution would be, you know, x equals 10. That's a solution, okay? Now, what does it mean when it says to solve a linear equation? Well, solving means we're going to find a value, right? Linear, as we've looked, a, an equation, a line, is this shape that if this is our x and y axis, a line might look something like this red line I've just drawn. It's, it's singular in its x and y values. For every x value, there's just one y value. So when it's linear, when we say a value, we mean there will be one specific value that makes the equation, one value, that makes a true equation, okay? So when we're talking about solving a linear equation, what we are trying to do is find one value, one value that makes my equation true, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, there are four main ways that you can isolate a variable, okay? There are four key operations that you need to know how to do. And we call these inverse, okay? So to solve, we use inverse operations. And what that means is they undo whatever operation you have in the problem. So if you look in this first example problem, we have 18 times x. That means we have multiplication, okay? How do we undo multiplication, we use division, okay? So what we are going to do is we are going to divide both sides of our equation by 18, okay? Because whatever you do to one side in order to balance the equation out, you have to do that to the other side. So we are going to divide both sides, left side, right side by 18, and we get that x is equal to negative 5. All right, and that value is our solution, okay? It is the value that if we substitute that back in, it makes this statement true. 18 times negative 5 does, in fact, equal 90, negative 90. That is true, okay? So if we look at our second problem, what do we have? Well, in the problem, we have, and by the way, when I say what do we have, I mean, what do we have attached to our variable? Because that's what we care about. We care about our variable. Here we have subtraction. Well, what do we use to undo subtraction? We use addition. So we are going to use addition. So we're going to add 12 to both sides, okay? So x is going to be equal to negative, let's see, negative 27 plus 12 would be negative 15. Now notice I'm crossing out the part that goes with what I'm undoing, okay? So I was subtracting 12, so I added 12, so that gets me zero, like that zero is out, so that's not there anymore. Now, what about the other way? If we have... So see in this original problem, we have m plus 8 equals 12. We have 
addition. So how are we going to get rid of that? What are we going to use? We are going to, well, when we had addition, we used, to, sorry, when we had subtraction, we used addition. So we're just going to kind of reverse that. If we have addition, we're going to use subtraction. Okay. So we're going to subtract 8. By the way, at any point in time, if you need to pause this, please don't hesitate. So we have crossed out our 8s because 8 minus 8 would be 0. So m is going to equal 12 minus 8, which is 4. And again, that's our solution. And all of these things I've circled so far, that was weird, um, are our solutions. And if you notice, they make our equations true. Okay, if I substitute in negative 15 and I subtract 12 from that, that is negative 27. That's a true statement. If I take 4 and I add it to 8, plugging in 4 for m, I do, that is 12. Those are all true statements. Okay, last problem to take a look at. We have, right now, with our variable, we have division, okay? So the last time division showed up, it went with multiplication, okay? And so we are going to, you know, do that same, make that same connection here. If we have division with our variable, then we are going to use multiplication, okay? And that means we're going to multiply by 5 on each side, which looks a little bit hard. So on this side, that's 5 times 3, not 5.3, 5, 5 times 3. 5 times 3, that's 15. Well, if we have k times 5 divided by 5, 5 divided by 5 is 1. So that's 1k or just k all by itself. And that's our solution, okay? Now, most problems will not be... These are all one step. Most problems will have a combination of using multiple steps together to isolate your variable. And so that's what we are going to look at next, okay? All right, so here we go. Key thing to remember in these multi-step problems is that our goal is to continue isolating the variable by eliminating values that are on the same side as the variable, okay? So if we take a look at problem number five, I'm gonna highlight where the variable is, okay? So right here, this is, this is the term we need to get by itself. Now, eventually we will also have to get rid of the negative six, but because that's attached to the variable still. But first order of business is anything that isn't highlighted has to be moved to the other, side because we need to get the variable by itself. So we can do this in a couple of ways. I would prefer to look at the 2 and the negative 1 that are both numbers and say, well, 2, 2 minus 1 is really just 1. So really, I have negative 11 equals 1 minus 6a on that side. So I want to combine any terms that are similar. Um, so those two numbers were similar. And then solve from there. So my next step, if I still am thinking about this part is my variable, this negative 6a, then I need to get rid of this 1 that I haven't highlighted. Well, that 1, even though you can't see it, there's a little bitty plus sign in front of that. So that means I have addition, so I'm going to use subtraction to get rid of it. So I'm going to subtract 1, which means I have to do that to the other side of my equation in order to balance this out. So it's going to be negative 12 equals negative 6a. Okay, now at this point, the real thing I'm focusing on is this letter A. That's my variable. Everything else has to go. So the everything else in this case is the negative 6. Now that negative 6 being right up next to that A means they're being multiplied. Okay, so there's a little tiny time symbol here. So if I have multiplication, I use division. So I divide. So we divide by negative 6, okay? divide by negative 6. So negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1, so I'm just left with the letter A. A negative divided by a negative is going to give me a positive, and 12 divided by 6 is 2. So that's positive 2. Now, you can do this every time if you want, but you, do, you don't have to. It's, you know, it's your call. You can check your work. So negative 11 was supposed to be 2 minus 6 times A, which is 2 minus 1. Hold on. Minus 1. 
Okay, so let's double check our work. 2 minus 12 minus 1. Negative 11 equals, let's see, 2 minus 12 is negative 10. Minus 1, that's 11. Okay, so we check that, that works. So if you're wondering where the order of operations comes into play, this is where it comes into play because we are using our order of operations to check and make sure that we got the right solution. Okay, I'm going to do one more problem on this page and then I'm going to have you try some. So I think I'm going to do number 6 because it's a different, sort of a different type of problem. So if I look, if I highlight where my variable is, it's here and it's here. So it's in these two places, negative 2x and negative 11x. So I'm going to keep the negative 8 and the 1, not changing those, but these two are the same type of term. So we want to condense those similar to how we condensed the 2 and the negative 1. So negative 2x and negative 7x, if I look at those kind of off to the side, those are going to be negative 9x's because 2 and 7 would be 9, but they're both negative, so it's negative 9x. Okay, so again, I'm going to highlight this part. Anything that's not highlighted here has to go, so I'm going to subtract this one. Oh, wow, check that out. That's a positive 1 again. Subtract 1, so now I get negative 9 equals negative 9x. And then similar to problem number 5, I really just want to focus on the letter x, and the letter x has this negative 9 in front of it being multiplied, so I'm going to divide by negative 9, and then that goes away, and negative 9 divided by negative 9 is 1, positive 1, so positive 1 equals x. And again, you can check that work if you want. So now what I'd like you to do is pause this video and try 7 and 8 on your own, and then when you are done doing them on your own, hit play, and I'll have the answers right up on screen for you. All right, folks, here we go. So your answers should be 2 for number 7 and 0 for number 8. That wasn't really meant to trip you up uh, right here where the 2 gets subtracted and that gets you 0. It's important, and you might even want to put a little star next to that. It's important that you remember that 0 is a number and 0 can be a value that's all by itself on a side of your equation. So it's totally fine that that happened. Okay, so we have one last thing to talk about. So there are times where you combine so many different operations together that you really have to, you know, you make some choices about what operation to do first. First, there's some flexibility, but the key thing is that you should always be trying to um, isolate and combine your variables. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, the variables should all be in the same place, that's combining, and they should be by themselves on one side of the equation, okay? So I'm going to do maybe one of these problems, and then you should try and do the rest of them, and then the answers will be there for you at the end, all right? So I'm going to do problem number nine. So just as before, I'm highlighting the variable so I can see where it's at. And then the other thing I'm going to do, because it's going to matter a little bit more, uh, for this problem, I'm going to put a little line so you can see where the sides of my equation are. So right now it would appear I have 7k on the left side and 7k on the right side. Okay, I need them to get to the same side, but first I have to figure out what this really is going on over here. Really it's negative 4 being distributed, right, when we've got this multiplication symbol, this parentheses, that means we're distributing. So really I have negative 28k plus 8 on that side. And I have negative 34 minus 7k. So here I have to make a choice. I'm going to make a choice that I want to add the 28k to this side because that's going to keep my variable positive. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. And because it's subtracting, that's why I add. So those cross out. So then I'm going to have... 21 k's. I'm still going to have this negative 34, so that's positive, and it's going to be equal to 8. Well, if I moved all the variables to the left, then I should really move all of the numbers, the constants, to the right. So I'm going to add 34, so 21 k equals 42. And then my last step is, since I have multiplication between the 21 and the k, I'm going to divide by 21, and then k is going to equal 2. All right, there we go. Perfect. The rest of the answers are actually going to be posted on Schoology because I am out of time. Thank you for listening.